God has really blessed our house. And today I'm going to teach a message that I titled a fence or O dash fence. Get it? O fence. And, and I want to start out by saying this as I teach this message that you will never change your mind until you change your mind. People say they want to change, but they're unwilling to change their mind. They want circumstances to change, then they'll change. But the way we change is change our thinking, and then we change our actions. You change what comes out of your mouth. And we need to understand God has, has put in this word so many interesting thoughts for us that if we would just learn it, it would change our whole lives. And let me say it this way. How many of you have had your life changed because of the gospel, the Bible? Yeah, so if, it, and, and do you, can I say it this way? If you've had your life changed, you know, God's not done changing your life. And so you can't ever come to a stopping place because when you do, you quit growing and then you go backwards. God's never a neutral God. You're either going forward with him or if you think you're neutral, you're going backwards. You're losing that which you've gained because you're not using it. That's why when Christians backslide, they, they, when, they, when they come to a place and then they start backsliding, it's because they came to a place where they decided they were not going to do any more of the Bible. Or I, I'll do this part, but I'm not going to do this part. And it's usually in two areas in the Christians. It's money and your time. Two main areas that people stop with God. And then they wonder how they backslide. They think it just happened. No, you started when you quit moving forward. So Ephesians 4, 29 through 32 reads, and never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth. You got to say amen or oh me right here. But instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. So never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted His holy influence in your life. Lay aside bitter words, temper tantrums, revenge, profanity, and insults, but instead be kind and affectionate toward one another. Has God graciously forgiven you? Then graciously forgive one another in the depths of Christ's love. In other words, when you walk around with offense, and I keep saying that because I'm going to use this fence in a little bit, you're not forgiving. And there's reasons why we get offended, and there's reasons why we stay offended. Luke 17, 1 through 4, Jesus said, then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible but that offenses should come, but woe unto him through whom they do come. So here's what Jesus said. If you think you're not going to have opportunities to be offended in this life, you, you've missed it. It's amazing to me how people get saved, and, and if they don't get good teaching to start off with, they'll say things like, I can't believe that person did that. I can't believe that person said that. Can I tell you why those people are doing that? It's because it's offending you, right? And, and the enemy wants you out of the kingdom, not in. And, and offense takes you away from God, not towards God. And you and I need to come to a place where, you know what? You just can't offend me. I've been doing this a long time. I say this jokingly, but I mean it seriously. If you want to offend me, take a number, line up, give it a shot. Because I, I've, been, I've been called things you can't imagine, things have been said to me, and I purposed a long time ago, I'm never going to walk in offense. Now, you may say something that ticks me off, like I get ticked off, but then I'll let it go. I won't harbor it. Because here's what we know, you will be offended. You, you'll have opportunities to be offended. But it doesn't mean you have to be offended. I cannot stop you from doing anything to me. The only, the only thing I'm in control of is my response to whatever happens or said. And so many of us submit to it and then we wonder why we're miserable. It's not because God wants you to be miserable, but that's who we blame. It's because we're not doing what the Bible teaches. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Think about what's happening in our nation. We live in a very sensitive society. Everything's offensive. Every word is offensive. We have the word police that is so liberal-minded and ungodly and they're trying to tell us what words are acceptable and what words are not. 
That's why I'm never the PC preacher. You won't get political correctness. You want that? I'll give you some names. Seriously, because I'm not it. I will never be it. No one's going to curb my free speech or tell me the Bible's wrong. Nobody. And nobody should tell you either. But think about what they're doing to children today. Think about the perversion that's happening. The laws that are being passed where they can take a 10-year-old and the 10-year-old can say, hey, instead of a girl, I was supposed to be a boy, and they can give them hormones. And then eventually when they're young, they can mutilate their bodies and make them, you know, instead of a girl parts, they have boy parts, even though they're still a girl or still a boy, whichever one that goes. And perverted parents are offending those little ones. And God said, Jesus said, it's better you tie a millstone around your neck and just drown yourself in the sea than to offend somebody like that. We're offending our children by not telling them the truth. Just think about how we offend them. By the way we live, sometimes we offend them. We come here and we lift our hands and worship. We go home and we're, we use ugly, hateful words, even speaking to them. And so he goes on to say, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass again the, against thee seven times a day, and seven times a day in a day, turn again to thee saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. In other words, Jesus was saying, if someone repents, you, you need to forgive them. That means they purpose not to do it again. Repentance is not, I'm sorry. God's never asked for an apology. Repentance is the man, I'll purpose not to do that again. But if you do it again, I did it again, man, I blew it. How many of y'all blown it more than once in life? See, and, and you know what? It, it's amazing how we'll all agree to it, but we, we don't let other people blow it more than once. So the word rebuke here, because I think in Christianity, we think of rebuke as harsh and mean, but rebuke really means to bring sin to a person's attention. In other words, dude, you're messing up. With the purpose of restoring him or her to God. It's not supposed to be harsh to me. It's like, hey, dude, you need to quit doing that. You need to get your life, man. That's not helping you. You need to quit talking to your wife like that. Or wife, you need to quit talking to your husband like that. You need to quit talking to your kids like that. Man, it's not healthy. But sometimes we think rebuke's got to be harsh and mean-spirited, but it doesn't. It's all about, man, I just want you to walk with God because I don't want my worst enemy to go to hell. I mean, people think I'm all angry at the governor. I don't want the governor to go to hell. I mean, do I like her? No, I can't stand her. But God never told me I had to like her. Oh, you got to love everybody. Really? When did he say that? God has the ability to love everybody. I mean... God has the ability to love us when we can't even love ourselves. But I'm not God. Everybody needs to realize at some point, you're not him. And so God has abilities we don't have. And the world, people are offending the little ones. Abuse, neglect, and some of the things I said, they lead them astray. But here's what we know. The opportunity to be offended comes to everyone. Rick Renner summarizes Luke 17, 1, and he said, it is simply unthinkable that you would allow yourself to dream that you could live this life without an opportunity to be lured into a situation that could potentially snare you in the feelings of offense. That's another way to read Luke 17, verse 1 through four, that we, we, we're, gonna, we're, we're being misled if you don't think you're going to have opportunities to be offended. And again, I can't, I can't prevent you from doing or saying whatever you want to do or say. I can just control what I, my response is to that. Offense means a violation of the victim's sense of what is proper or fitting. It, it's to cause resentful displeasure, irritate, annoy, or anger. When people are offended, they have their own ideas of how people should respond to them, how people should react in certain situations. And if that doesn't happen, 
they feel slighted. Folks, as a pastor that I've been a long time, I, I, can't, I, don't, I can't number the amount of people that said, I can't believe you act like that. Or you're a pastor, you should act like that. And, I, and I'm thinking, are you serious? First of all, how do you know what pastor's supposed to act like? And most of the time when they're saying that, you're supposed to be passive, weak, wimpy, never say much about anything, be fearful of people instead of fearing God. And so I take exception to that. Like, how do you know how a pastor's supposed to act? How do you know a pastor's not supposed to act like I'm acting? But people get offended, like, I can't believe you said that. Well, years ago, I pastored in Roswell, and I had a guy, seriously, he got offended. He left the church for a while. And here's what I said to him. I said, you know, preaching the word is like throwing a rock into a pack of dogs. You always know which one it hits because they're the one yelping the loudest. So he came up to me, seriously, he was angry. He came up to me after church. He said, I can't believe it. I said, what? I said, why are you mad? I could call his name. I remember his name. He said, I can't believe you called me a dog. I said, dude, I never, when did I call you a dog? He said, you said if you throw a rock into a pack of dogs. And I said, but I, I, that was a metaphor. That wasn't like, I wasn't calling you a dog. But then he said, then you know, he went on to say, yeah, the one that hits yelps the loudest. That's why he left. People who are typically offended have a need to control and feel as if they are in control. They need to be in control of other people. They believe that their truth and their version of the truth is the truth. And there is no room for other realities. They're passive aggressive because they can't have an emotionally healthy conversation about their feelings. They, being passive aggressive is a form of power because they don't know how to be vulnerable with others. They don't know how to be wrong. People who harbor resentment or grudges tend to be more sensitive and vulnerable than others. They, they tend to be insecure people. And when we talk about sensitive people, we're not talking about just women. I know men that are so overly sensitive, it just freaks me out. Like, dude, I can't say anything to you. Have you ever said something to somebody and you and they found out later they were so offended and you're like, that offended you? Anybody? Yeah, it's because people are overly sensitive, especially in our society. You can't say anything. I mean, I can say this. The reason I don't use the word straight ever, you don't ever hear me say that? Because that, that wasn't a God word. That was, that was the homosexual community telling me who I am. No, I'm I'm normal. Oh, and here, here's the offense. Here's the offense right now. Someone watching right here. <gasps> I told you I wasn't politically correct, and they're not going to make up words for me. God made two sexes, male and female. Period. I mean, and if you don't believe that as a Christian, you're messed up. Well, what about these other people? What about them? They need God. Can I say it this way? You and I need to understand that there are people waiting to be invited because they, if, if invited and they get to hear the gospel, they'd make a decision for Christ. Think about the people that you haven't invited or won't invite for whatever reason, and think about when they meet Jesus in the judgment. And they said, man, if I'd have, been, if I'd have known, I would have believed, but no one ever told me. Truth, absolute truth comes from the Word. And you and I either believe or we don't. And if you're an overly sensitive person, everything offends you. A spirit of offense is feeling resentful because of an actual or perceived insult. And other times, it is an unintended slight that we misinterpret, that people who are offended misinterpret so many things. They just do. It's, just, it's what happens to them. I don't know if I should jump off this stage or not. No. No, I, I, I have something on my back. Watch. I'm on. Y'all didn't know I could run, but I can run. I'm old, but I'm not that old. People that walk in a fence, it destroys their life. It hurts them and everybody around them. And they're no fun to be around. And so this is offense. You with me? 
Now you know why I titled it O dash fence. O fence. And some of us are walking around offended. So some of you in here worshiping God like you just know him so well and you got an offense and you're like, so your worship goes about as high as this fence. Because when you're walking in unforgiveness, the Bible says he can't forgive you. You getting it? Offense? Think about it. Come on, let me in here. Come on, hurt, make it, move, move. Let me in here. Come on, man. Can you, can you see what he's doing? Did you I saw see him? Back here. He wouldn't let me in. I think he tried to take your wallet. Come on, man. Let me, come on, man. What, what's, what, let me through here. Oh, yeah, you're not moving good enough. Come on, you. I don't think they know who you are. I don't think they realize. What are you looking at? What are you all looking at? Are you kidding me? When you're offended, you don't see clearly. All they're doing is wondering, what the heck am I doing? And even though they tried to move, he didn't really try to move, but she moved. She moved. It doesn't matter because I'm already offended, so you can't do enough. So you going to let me buy a man? Come on. Dude. He's trying to hold you back. Hey. He's trying to hold me back? He's trying to hold you back. Yeah. Do you see that, too? I think he's jealous, kind of, where yeah. you're going and where he's not. I can't believe you know? these people. What the heck? What is going on here? Don't be looking at me. Did you see the way she's looking at me, too? Yeah. She's just like, hey, looking hey. down at you. Even though hey, she didn't, she, didn't, she didn't even really do anything, though. Like, Oh, she didn't? No. She's just, she's just sitting there. What? She's not doing anything. She's just sitting there. Oh, okay. Who's he? Can you believe he said that to me? <laughs> I don't know. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. Who, who does he think he I is? I don't know. He just stood up out of nowhere. He just, just, you need to write that down. We'll, you know, yeah, I, I, keep, keep you, track of it. Can you believe it? Where's my wife? Cynthia, can you believe what these people are doing right here? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you something? When you're offended, you can't be offended by yourself. You have to bring people with you. Because offended people do this all the time. Wah, 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 wah. But it can't, you can't be by yourself, so. But, here, but you know what? He, he, was, he was telling me. Did, did you guys notice how I agreed with him at first? What did I say? Offended people are passive aggressive. Oh, okay. And then I'm like, oh, I can't believe he said that. Because that's what offended people do. I'm coming. Huh? Get a, get a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, now I'm offended because he took a bad picture of me. My mouth was open. <laughs> Come on, David. Let's see if they let us through. Right, let's get out of here. I don't understand. Did you, did you see what that first guy did? Did you see what he did? He wouldn't let me through. Did you see it? He didn't let you through. He didn't, did you see? He was holding me up. She was laughing. She thought it was funny. She was laughing? She was laughing at you. Oh, you thought it was funny that he was holding me up? I, was, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> you thought it was funny when he took a picture of me? Cause, so I look funny. Do you think I look funny? I, so I look bad. No. You, you tell me, just because I turned sick, you think I, now I'm ugly. Did you? I think that's what she's saying. She calls herself a Christian, too. Oh, oh, you're one of them. No, oh, yeah. Excuse me. Now, you're not going to let me through either? No. Come, no, you, no, she said no. <laughs> now I'm really offended. Let me buy. Man, did you? She called me ugly, dude. Can you, I mean, what's wrong with these people? From all of these people. You saw what he did. Oh, dude, you, 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 you're going to have to move, brother. Did you see what that first guy did? You can't believe him either? I can't believe him either, man. He, and and I, I, like, I like him. He was a friend. Yeah, but he wouldn't let me through. Just until you back turned. Dude, you're going to have to move, brother. You... <laughs> oh, now, now, now you want to fight. David, he wants to fight. Hey, hey, give me two big dudes. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to watch you fight him. No, I'm kidding you, man. You're going to let me buy, let me buy, brother. No, don't hinder me. Don't, don't bump me. Man, you touch me. What the heck, man? He's like, this is crazy. Yeah. He's, did he wipe on me? He's like, wipe all this stuff man. on me. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on. Man, you guys, let me. 
Man, they, they're hindering me. Yeah, did you see Everybody's the against me, David. They are. Everybody. Right you see them, they're against us. Yep. I'm right Everybody. here Everybody. They're not treating us well. They're not even being nice about it, laughing at they're us. They're just jealous. That's, yeah, that's I all. don't know. I, I can't we'll believe it. We'll remember that. And now you're not going to really let me through. Look at that, man. He, he's like really stopping me. <laughs> he's got his whole body take in there. Care of my, take care of him, dude. Take care of him. Huh? I'd like to invite you to church with me, man. Huh? I'd like to invite you to church with me. I'm not going anywhere with you, man. You're going to let me through. You're going to let me through. Invite me to church. Bunch of hypocrites no, in goes. that church anyway. When you're offended, that's how you see life. And can I tell you this? Carrying a fence is hard. Stand up here for a minute, man. It's heavy. A fence gets heavy. So I want you to take this fence. I want you to hold it up like that. Right, get them arms straight, man. Hold it up. Just, just turn around and face me. Turn around and face me. Turn around and face me. Just, just leave it there right there. Just leave it. Don't put it down. When you carry a fence. You're passive aggressive. So Steve got up. He said she didn't, he didn't really, she wasn't really doing anything. And I, and I, I, I verbally agreed. And as soon as I did, I backed to my fence. And then I'm bringing David with me because you never go, you're never offended by yourself because it's always someone doing you wrong. And when you get that visual and that perspective, you can't see through that fence because when you look through it, it's obscure. So you can't see the reality, so then everybody's against you, and you become the greatest victim of all. And can I tell you what happens when you become the greatest victim? There's no hope. Now, don't, don't keep it up there, man. <laughs> don't offend me by letting your arms down. <laughs> so when you're offend, offended, it destroys your life. And even though none of those people were being mean to me, I made it sound like every one of them was against me. And if they were all going to be honest, they said, man, we didn't do anything. We didn't even know what he was doing. He just, I just randomly picked this row, by the way. They had no idea I was coming down. <laughs> but because I'm offended, everybody's hindering me. Everybody's holding me back. You know what the fence does, too? It puts a barrier around you that you can't go any further. You, you've, you put this fence around you so you can't go any further. You're trying to. You get more irritated and angry because you feel like someone's holding you back and the person holding you back is you. Yeah, but you don't know what this person does. See, offense always blames them. You know what someone does that's getting healthier? I know what they did. I can't, I can't, I can't go back and undo that. But what am I going to do today with me? How I respond is my choice. Getting heavy? Dude, you're good. Are your shoulders getting a little tight? A little sore? Okay, just hold up a little longer then. Um, you want me to let it go? Okay, you can put it down. Are you relieved now? It does get heavy. Huh? This is real light, but when you carry your offense, it becomes such a heavy burden to destroy your life. Now, I'm not good at visual aids, but I thought, I'm going to do this. To show you something, you'll never forget a picture that when someone says something you don't like, Someone says something that hurts your feelings, you'll let it go because you'll say, I'm not carrying around that offense. Yeah. Ask him, was your arms getting sore? I probably could have left up there another five minutes. He'd have probably been like, come on, dude, let me out. <laughs> and then I'm looking at ladies who are just looking around, seeing what I'm doing, and I'm looking like, what are you looking at? Because that's how we think. Yeah. You know, it's amazed me in the church when I hear someone say, yeah, I was in church, and this other guy across the way was mad-dogging me. I'm like, you know what I always want to say to them? How important do you think you really are? <laughs> that someone picked you across the whole thing and you saw them. Most of us are getting the age, we can't see past a few rows. <laughs> and I've had people say that, well, they're mad dog. I mean, I, I, and then you go talking to them like, they don't even know who you are. They're just spacing off or looking or contemplating. But we're so offended, we think you've got to puff up because of your insecurity. You're not the tough guy or the tough girl. You're the insecure one that always wants to battle. How many of y'all are tired of fighting all the time in life? Yeah, I am too. So I purposed a long time ago, I refuse 
to walk in a fence. I refuse to. I am not going to walk in a fence because it's too heavy and it blocks everything. It blocks, puts a barrier around me where I can't get out. I can't go beyond it. It hinders my worship of an almighty God who really loves me. And Jesus said he came to heal the broken heart of what we need to do is start believing God, recognizing and start believing God. God, you got to help me. I'm, I'm overly sensitive. I thank God I married a woman that's not overly sensitive. Because if she was, I'd be crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't be here today. And I think she's glad I'm, I'm not overly sensitive. Because when you're overly sensitive, it just destroys you. It doesn't help anybody else. It just destroys everything around you. Relationships. But you're going to blame others. It's their fault. Her fault. His fault. Teacher's fault. Boss's fault. Instead of just saying it is what it is, I'm going to just do the best I can in the situation I'm in. Some of us are so offended from what happened to us when we were kids. And my heart breaks for you if you were hurt as a kid. In fact, we spent millions of dollars on a children's facility because kids don't have a choice who their parents are. But can I say this to you with all sincerity? At some point, you've got to mature and grow and let those things go. Because if you stay offended, they'll just destroy everything around you. You won't have any relationships that are healthy. And everybody will be the bad guy. Just remember this. When you're offended, you carry that everywhere you go. I mean, no matter how good your wardrobe is, does this make it look better? <laughs> Honey, do these, make, do these jeans make my... My glutus maximus look fat? I don't know, honey, because you're so offended, I can't see through the fence. The fence just destroys everything. Or offense destroys everything. It does nothing good for any of us. So you can go tell everybody all your problems over and over and over again, but they're never going to get any better until you start thinking about how can I move beyond that? Amen. That's the healing. I got to walk, run around. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my workout. See, if I was real charismatic, I'd go, woo! And there's the dude that I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> and I can still run, by the way. I got older, but I can run. I can just tell you right now I can run. That's the point, though. We need to, we need to lay some things down today. You need just to decide to change your mind to say, I resemble that and I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be a part of that. So people who are easily offended, and I'll begin to close, they complain more often than not. They're always complaining. They're always the victim. And they are, tend to be very insecure people. They tend to be narcissistic in their thinking because there is no reasoning with them. They will ignore you no matter how many facts you throw at them. It doesn't matter. It's always about the way I feel. And it's because of the way I feel, you're guilty. Yeah, but I didn't mean that. Yes, yes, you did. Or here's one. They apologize, but it wasn't sincere enough. They really didn't mean it. So you go to those people and say, did you mean when you apologize? Yeah, I did. But because you're offended, it's never good enough. So I don't know what people want. I mean, do you, do you get on your knees and cry? I mean, I mean you, you know, we watch too many movies. And movies work your emotions. And they take you on a roller coaster ride, and we like it. We laugh, we cry, we get serious and look. And we think after watching an hour and a half movie that that's what real life is about. But when you live life, you realize that's just a story to amuse you, entertain you. Real life can be better if we do better. And people who are always easily offended, all they want is attention anyway. They just want someone to listen to them. Abraham Lincoln said, we should be too big to take offense and too noble to give it. So here it is. Here's some symptoms. Do you explode in fits of anger over little things? 
If you do, you're probably a walking offense. Do others say you make mountains out of mohills? Why are you making a big deal out of this? Do you frequently take things the wrong way? Does someone always have to say, I didn't mean it that way? I didn't mean it that way. Do others feel like they have to walk on eggshells around you? Do you know any of those people? Do others consider you high maintenance? Are you overly sensitive? So how do you overcome being offended, holding grudges, being angry? Again, Luke 4.18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, deliverance. Some translations say deliverance to the captives. So be, to be delivered from being easily offended, number one, we must pray and ask God to heal us. We must recognize that maybe everybody else is not the problem because that whole role became my problem. And none of them, except the one lady that called me ugly, <laughs> did anything wrong to me. He said, but they didn't let you go, but they didn't even know what I wanted to do. I just pushed my way in. And then I got offended because they didn't do what I thought they should do or move the way they thought they, I thought they should move. We need to learn humility that maybe we could be wrong or maybe we're taking it wrong. We need to love truth more than being right. We need to overcome selfishness, the all about me mentality. We need to reserve judgment. In other words, we need to finish the discussion. And we all need to accept no one is perfect. I believe those who are easily offended put unreal expectations on others and none on themselves. We have become a highly sensitive culture and using an incorrect word can get you fired, can cause you lots of pain or get you canceled today in our society. And the reason that is because the farther America and the world moves away from God, the more sin comes in and the more sensitive we become. We make things that are not eternal big deals. Big deals. So we get to decide for ourselves your choice. You can stay overly sensitive and walk in a fence. You can be offended over some of the things I said tonight. Like, who does he think he's talking to? I don't know. But I know who the Spirit of God's talking to, people who have ears to hear. Because if you get free of this, you'll be free the rest of your life. You'll, you'll live, life will be better for you. Even the way you see circumstances will be different. You know, years ago, I had a staff guy. He may be watching. And I told my wife I was leaving one day, and I hadn't been here very long, and I said, I'm firing so-and-so today. And my wife, I was fixing to leave. I said, today's his last day. I'm going to walk in. I'm firing him. I don't trust him. I'm firing him. And my wife stopped me. She said, can I tell you something? Because she knew I was in that mindset. And I said, what? And she said, Steve, there's got to be another answer for him. And I said, why? And she goes, you always teach that if their money is here, their heart's here, so there's got to be another answer. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, I looked. We knew what we paid them. And their tithe, they gave like 20% of what we, what we paid them. They, they gave over, well over 10. They gave another 10. So the Bible says, well, you're treasures that will your heart be also. So she said, there's got to be another answer. So then I was mad because she wasn't really with me. Are you hearing me? But instead of trying to be right, I needed to listen to some truth. So this gentleman and I, we met in my office and I said, you know what I want to do? I want to fire you. I have every intention. I came here to, I wanted to fire you. And he goes, you don't have to fire me. I came in here to quit. And he was much older than I was. Like 20 years, 20 something years older than me. I said, good, then just quit. He said, I should. I said, no, I should fire you first. 
Seriously, that's how the conversation went. And then I said, yeah, but maybe there's another answer. He said, yeah, maybe there is. So we worked through what the issue was. We finally got to the issue. He said, what, what, do you, what issue do you have with me, Pastor? And I told him. He said, man, I, I, I've never done any of that. I'm with you. I want to see the church to do well. And then my wife's words were coming into my ears. His heart's here, so maybe you're wrong. Offended people can never be wrong. So this gentleman and I, we're friends today. Actually, I spoke to him today. He ended up traveling the state with me to watch my children play basketball. We became friends, and, and when he left here, he left in good standing. We helped him and supported him. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Some of you are ruining relationships, not because they need to be ruined. It's because you're too busy being right instead of listening to maybe what's true. <laughs> Offended people have to be right even when they're wrong. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being here today. I thank you for teaching us. Thank you for helping us. I pray, God, that Jesus is here, that the Spirit of the Lord is here, and that people are changing their minds today and saying, you know what? God, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be that overly sensitive person. Oh, God, he's talking to me. That, he described me. That's how people talk about me. And God, it's not their fault. It's my issue. So, Father, I'm asking that you heal hearts and minds today. I know people that have been hurt and brutally hurt, and I, I didn't mean any disrespect. If you've been hurt as a child and abused, I know it's horrific. My heart breaks for you. But you can't go back and play the game again. You, you can't go undo it. You just have to say, this is the reality. Now, what am I going to do from here? Do I want to walk around with this offense and this pain and this heaviness? And just seeing life through a, a, a vantage point, a view of everybody's bad. Everybody's out to get me. No one's good. Everybody's evil. Man, what a burden that is to bear. Or do I want to live life trying to find the good things in life? What's best in life? Valuing relationships, even though they're not perfect, because there's no perfect person. But recognizing my own weaknesses, my own issues in life. That I got things to work on too. Not putting unreal expectations on anybody. and learning to forgive quickly. Father, help us today. May the Spirit of the Lord that is upon this place do what only God can do in Jesus' name. If you're here right now, with every head bowed, everybody online, same thing. Can you say, preacher, would you include me in your prayer? I do want God to forgive me. And I'm willing to forgive. I'm willing to lay those offenses, those things down. I just want, I want peace in my mind. I want peace in my heart. I, I don't want to see life like you just ex demonstrated, but that's how I see it. Some of you are sitting next to people that see it that way. That's why they're angry, bitter, resentful. Nothing pleases them. You can't please that person ever. And if that's you and you say, preacher, would you pray for me in Jesus' name? Or if you're here and you say, I need to get right with God. I've never given God my heart. I've never believed in my heart and confessed with my mouth the Lord Jesus, but I'm ready to today. I don't even know what it means all the way, but I know I need. There's something in me that says I need this relationship with God because we all need it. And without it, you don't get to go to heaven. It's God's heaven. He gets to decide who gets to come and who doesn't. And if you walk with God and walked away, that's what... I'm trying to say, if you want to come home, you get to come home and he'll forgive you because God's not offended with you. He wants the best for you. But you got to want the best for yourself. If that's you, in Jesus' name, right where you're seated, all over this place, so I know who I'm praying for. And it gives you a mo moment, a form of confession that says, I don't care what anybody thinks, man, I need to get my life right. And Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my heavenly Father in heaven. It's a form of confession. 
It's not hard. It's very simple. If that's you, in Jesus' name, you say, preacher, include me in your prayer. I'm ready to give up on offense. I'm ready to ask God to help me and heal me and pray. And I, I just, I just want to live differently. If that's you in the powerful name of Jesus, right where you're seated, here's what I'm asking you to do quickly without any hesitation. If that's you and you say, preacher, pray for me, would you please lift your hand all over this place? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. As I look across, who else? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm going to look across the top. Anybody else want to join these? Say, preacher, today I'm ready to lay some of this stuff down. God bless you over here. I'm going to look across the top. Who else would join these? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Anybody else, folks? This is, we're all going to pray a prayer. You're not going to pray alone. Thank you. God bless you. This is the time. This is the moment where God can move. God bless you. Thank you. In your life. Remember what I said at the beginning? If you want to change, you have to change your mind. You have to be willing to change to change. Don't just say, I want to change and do nothing. Change and do something. With God in you, your life can be totally different. I'm not going to say it'd be easy all the time, but at least you have the help, the strength to overcome, to move forward in life. Anybody else? Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every hand. I'm going to look across one more time. I don't want to miss anybody. Yes, thank you. God bless you. Father, again, in the powerful name of Jesus, I thank you for each one that lifted their hand because you know everything about them, God, and you still want them in your family. And God, as they respond to you, I pray you show yourself strong in the behalf that they would know you and know your ways. That you'd open their eyes to their understanding and they would truly be able to say, man, I, there's something that went on in me and man, I'm just starting to think a little different. Bless each one, Father, in Jesus' name. If you lifted your hand, I want you to pray this prayer aloud with me. The Bible says, we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths. I want everybody in here that's right with God to pray in support of those because you don't know how many people are around you. I don't want them praying by themselves. We're going to pray together. Would you pray this prayer with me aloud? Would you pray, Father? I'm going to lead you to Christ, folks. That's all I'm doing. Only he can save you. I can't save you. The church can't save you. You, by your own believing and confessing. So again, would you pray, Father, I choose to believe in Jesus and that he's your son. And now, according to your word, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. Jesus, be Lord of my life. I give you permission to my heart, my soul, my body, you now are Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's thank the Lord, church, if you want.